so as Melissa said, she's on her way back from vacation. So um, she knew her connection might not be so great. So I'll, I'll kind of be stepping in in her place. She'll be obviously though available and listening and she can step in as needed. Sounds like a perfect team approach. Seeing that it is 7.30, with the call to order the Board of Health meeting for the 10th of August. We will start off with, um, I know, Melissa, you're probably in and out. Rikki, if there's any um, COVID or town or department updates that you wanted to start off with, that would be great. So I can um, jump in here briefly. Our numbers are, have gone up slightly. Um, let me just pull up Trish, Trish's email from earlier. I apologize. I think right now we are monitoring 26, I mean 46. Um, so yeah, so currently we're monitoring 46 um, and we have seen an additional 27 cases in just this past week. Um, so we are continuing to monitor the situation. Um, we have regular calls with the state. Um, we're still, the state is still encouraging um, particularly unvaccinated people to um, wear their face coverings indoors. Um, and even if you are vaccinated, um, it is a good recommendation to wear it indoors. It's not mandated, it is a recommendation. Um, so we're hoping that the numbers will kind of stay where they are and not continue to go up. But we have seen um, a slight increase. Um, but Trish has been staying on top of it. She's been doing a great job. Um, I know that she's been, she and Melissa are working with the schools um, as they're planning to reopen soon. Um, and so we have good communication with all the, the departments. So do you know if, uh, there, if any of the cases are the variant, uh, Rika, or is, is it I just... do not know that. They don't do, um, the, the state only samples, like takes certain samples for testing. Um, I think on Maven, so the, the system where all the cases come through, you might be able to pull up to see if they are the Delta. Um, I don't know if Trish has done that. I think it's very few that are getting specifically tested for the Delta. So it's difficult to know. I can, I can grab my notebook if you want and tell you what the percentage was as of the other day. In Walpole or in Massachusetts? No, in just in Massachusetts. It would be the whole state. Yeah, so, so Massachusetts, be... it's now the Delta variant is the most common, yeah. um, but I don't know about um, Walpole specifically. Not about Walpole. We can say um, if any of them are the Delta variant. But do we know if any of the 46 cases in, that we're monitoring right now in Walpole, are they, do you know if they're people who already been vaccinated or unvaccinated? Oh. Um, that, I don't know. Trish gets um, some of that information um, in Maven. And then also when she does the, when contact tracing happens, that is a question that they're asked. Um, I, I see Trish jumped on the call. Um, she might be able to speak to it a little bit better. Um, I know it was discussed this morning. I don't think, um, Trish, I'll turn it over to you. You can probably explain it a little bit better. I think she needs to unmute. Oh, sorry. Okay. I just missed the question, Rika. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't hear it 40, as I was logging on. Of the 46 cases that we're monitoring, um, do you know if any of those have been vaccinated individuals? That I don't know. It is a question that's asked um, when the CTC goes through it, because when we get the cases through Maven, um, their vaccine status doesn't come through with it. It's in a different system through MIIS. Um, but there is a, um, a question in the drop down box that we do, you know, have to ask if they've been vaccinated or not. Those cases have still been going to um, CTC in the state. So I don't know for sure what we've gotten back is, but that's something we're gonna be keeping track of, um, especially with our numbers growing to see what portion of those are actually vaccinated and not. So um, I'm hoping after um, we're CTC and myself, we got a little backed up because I came on a little fast and furious, but mm -hmm. I'm hoping uh, within the next week, I'll have a better idea of that. Like I said, just the percentage of who's been vaccinated and who's not. I, I can speak to, um, I feel that a majority of the cases we're getting through now are of the age they're under 12. Um, so they're not eligible for the vaccine yet. 
uh, it's, you know, so there's a lot of um, groupings as far as within families and things like that. Um, so that's a little, that's a little tough to see. So I do know there's a, a good number that are much younger, not able to get vaccinated yet. Oh, okay. Thank you, Trisha Mika. That was very good information. Just to jump on too. So also, I know I sent everyone in the email um, from last Thursday vaccination rate. So on a positive note, I mean, we are aligning with the Commonwealth as a whole. So the Commonwealth is 70, about 73% have completed one vaccine, about 64% getting the second dose. And in Walpole specifically, it's 73 for the first dose and about 67% for getting both doses. So um, that's definitely some good information. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Melissa. Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate that. All right. Um, we are behind the approval of the minutes is next on our list approval of July 6th meeting minutes. If anybody had a chance to review them, if there's any comments or uh, edits. I didn't find any. I, they look good to me. Mm -hmm. I did not find anything either. If that's the case, I will uh, ask for a motion. I'll make a motion that the minutes for July 6th are um, accepted as as prepared. I'll second that. Great. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other comments? And we will put it to a vote. Mona? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Carol? Aye. And I will be an aye also, 400. Didn't miss anybody, did I? No, that's all of us. <laughs> All right, next on our agenda is variance request for 399 Lincoln Road, lot five. And I believe we have uh, John on the line for this. John? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. So I'm here. Um, can you help me with it, Rika? Or I think so. Which would you like me to pull up first? The, uh, the, the large plan that shows all of the lands of the uh, New England uh, home for the. So anyway, I'm here representing the New England Home for Little Wanderers. Um, their address is actually 399-407 um, Lincoln Road. That's great, Rika. Thank you. So on the screen, um, you can see all of the property that the New England Home uh, owns, and it's about 150 acres. So it's off of Lincoln Road. Um, that road coming in down the bottom is um, Plain Street. And I think probably most of you have seen the buildings as you drive out Lincoln Road towards Norfolk. So back to the right would be Walpole and going to the left on this plan would be going towards Norfolk. And um, the... Um, uh, Home for the Little Wanderers would like to subdivide, or they're in the process of subdividing off five lots. So you can see those in the front. And all of those lots are well above and beyond the zoning requirements of 40,000 square feet, um, of uh, 200 feet of frontage, and of what we call the percent upland, which for rural zoning would be 24,000 square feet. Believe me, they all have uh, tons of upland um, and area. Um, so, um, and then maybe if you can just go to the other subdivision, the one that kind of shows the lots um, in the wetlands around them. Um, can you, can you see it, John, or not right no, now? No, we're still looking at the one first one. Um, so are they building new uh, new facilities over so there? Go, no, they are going to, uh, thank you, Rika. So this is the actual subdivision plan. So what the, what the uh, home is going to do is actually sell off these five lots, right? They don't exist right now. Um, okay. I was instructed to... Um, sort of hold this back from the planning board until we were sure that um, we were going to be able to sort of go forward. And I'm not putting any pressure on you. I'm just, you know, trying to give you a fact. 
Um, so as soon as, uh, you know, if I'm successful here tonight, we will be filing this plan with the planning board. It's called an A and R plan. So A and R stands for approval not required. So in Massachusetts, if you have a lot or if you subdivide a lot off of your property and it conforms to the zoning requirements for frontage <clears throat> in lot area, then you, it's sort of an administrative uh, procedure. You bring it in front of the planning board. You sort of point out that all of your lots meet the zoning requirements that they front on a public street and the planning board signs the plan. It's not a public hearing. Um, there really isn't much opportunity for the planning board even to you know, amend the plan or ask for uh, certain things, unless there's a, some sort of an error on the plan, but I don't believe that there's an error here. So, but be, so let me just start then again. If you see that sort of that squiggly line uh, let's start from the right side. Yeah, there you go. Those are the wetlands, okay? And those were delineated um, in the field by a woman who subcontracts for me. Her name is Karen Skinner Catroni. And she's been doing this for me for at least 20 years, maybe a little bit more. So the wetlands have been flagged. We know they're accurately flagged. She's very conservative. She doesn't really, I've never really had an issue with her. Um, land is, uh, is uh, you know, always has no problem with Karen's flagging. So we're sure that the, the flags are delineated accurately. And then um, we located those flags. And then we um, tried to draw the lot lines where we could meet the town of Walpole's requirement for the distance between wetlands and um, a leach field. So your requirement is 150 feet. Um, the state's requirement, Title V, is 50 feet. But we wanna meet your requirement as much as possible. So starting on the left side of the lots, that's lot one. We have no problem fitting a system in. It's up near Lincoln Road where we did the soil testing. Um, great soil there, sand soil. Um, I forget now, but no real water table issue to speak of. And then lot two, um, that um, system would be a little bit back from the street, sort of at the back of that circle. Those circles are zoning requirements. Um, and so again, no problem staying 150 feet from the wetlands. Um, so we have no problem with that. Again, lot three, the same thing. The um, leach field would be back about at the back of that circle. Um, again, no problem staying 150 feet from the wetlands. Lot four, similar to lots one, two, and three. And then we get to lot five. So lot five, as you can see, the wetlands sort of uh, come into the property. Um, this is the, it doesn't make any difference if we move that lot line to the right side, it's not going to help us. Um, on the other side of that are, are, is the beginning of the buildings um, that uh, form the Longview Farm, the New England Home for the Little Wanderers uh, facilities. And in the very front of the lot, um, probably to the middle of the circle or so, um, its ledge. And so when we go down the hill, though, the soil becomes very deep. So Rika, maybe you can put the septic plan up there now. Um, okay, so here's that lot, which we call lot five. And you can see the wetlands on the right. You can see the wetlands numbered, uh, how Karen numbered them as she placed them in the field. Um, again, we located all those from on the ground survey. Um, and you can see the proposed um, leach field, which is as far to the left, as far away from the wetlands as we can, as we can get mm. it to be. Up in front, you can see that little thing right on the lot line 
looks like a dress or something, <laughs> somebody, <Okay. laughs> or a Halloween thing. <laughs> That's ledge. So there is some ledge outcrops. And um, not sure if Rika and Melissa saw them, but up where we're sort of showing the house in the front, um, that's sort of a, a little bit of a knob of ledge. So we weren't able to um, successfully get a hole there that would meet Title V requirements, which is a minimum of four feet of naturally occurring permeable soil. But when we get down to where we're showing the leach fields, um, we have in test pit 13, 78 inches of naturally occurring permeable soil, and in test pit 14, 98 inches of naturally occurring permeable soil. And that's where we want to be. And that's where we want to be for you guys. We don't really like to push the envelope so much. We don't want to just have the 48 inches. We want to have a, a system that we know is um, well designed, well built, and going to last for a long time. But unfortunately, that location for that system um, is not 150 feet from the wetlands. It's 107 and a half feet from the wetlands. So we have asked um, under your regulations, not under Title V, we, because it's new construction, we have to meet all of the requirements of Title V, um, which we do. But we're asking under your um, regulation, which is Walpole Code 767-3 and then number four, allow the soil absorption system to be less than 150 feet, to be 107.5 feet from bordering vegetated wetland. And, um, you know, so because of the sort of the way the wetlands circle this piece of property, um, we've what would happen is if you deny this, essentially they're going to uh, lose the ability to have five lots and they're going to be four lots um, or someone else is gonna come back with some kind of crazy configuration to kind of make this happen. I think we'd like to see it happen where we're confident that there we, you have the depth of soil more than the depth of soil that's required and you're as far away from the wetlands as possible. So we're 57 and a half feet farther from the wetlands than Title V requires. Um, I don't see any environmental or any health reason why this can't be approved. Um, I have shown a plan and I can't guarantee you, I can guarantee you that that's where the septic system is gonna go. I cannot guarantee you that that's where the house is gonna go, but we would, advise uh, any buyer of this lot that um, they should endeavor, they should try to keep all of the alteration outside of 100 feet of the wetlands. I can't guarantee that that's going to happen, but I know that the board prefers um, any alteration of property to be outside of the 100 foot buffer, which is the limit of the Conservation Commission. So, um, Try not to bore you any farther <laughs> anymore, but that's our request, is the request to be 107 and a half feet from the bordering vegetated wetland where your code requires 150 feet. Thank you. So John, currently there are no buildings on these five lots. I mean- No, there's no buildings. There were buildings on the other side of this property probably a hundred years ago. There was a dam down there, there was some kind of mill or something, but those things are all, we can see the foundations and you can see the dam that was breached down there, but that stuff's all gone. This is in all intents and purposes, vacant property. I mean, it was a farm at one time, uh, but, it, but right now it's vacant property. So the concern is mostly with lot five. Um, that's that's the one that's the closest to the wetland in the future, like if the, in case they sell the, the land. So lots mm -hmm. one through four. So we have, we're not proposing them to you tonight because there's really no <laughs> reason to do right. that. All lots one through four, we have placed septic systems for four bedroom houses um, on the lots without being within 150 feet of wetlands. So there's really no reason 
for myself or any other engineer to bring those lots back or to bring those lots in front of you for the purpose of being closer to the wetlands with a septic system. So lots, as I said, our, we tried to do it so that it, we wouldn't, not that we don't, not that I don't like you or anything, but just, you know, uh, wouldn't mm -hmm. prefer that if we could get all of the lots and have all of the septic systems 150 <laughs> feet from the wetlands. But to, to design a good septic system um, in, you know, in air, so this, the, the land here, when you're up by Lincoln Road, other than that lot one, when you're up by Lincoln Road, it's ledge. And when you get down by the wetlands in the back, it's ledge. In between, there's deep soil. So all these systems, except for the one on lot one, which will be up near Lincoln Road, all of them will be about, you know, whatever distance we're showing there, about uh, 150 feet or so back from Lincoln Road, because that's where the deep soil is, and that's where you want to put the system, right? So you know it's going to get a lot of treatment before it gets to ledge and groundwater, ledge essentially is groundwater table, right? Because the water can't go through the ledge. So um, we want to have our separation to water table and we want to make sure that we have a lot of soil under the, under the system. So no one should, I can't guarantee it, and you might not see me back on this because uh, there's a builder, I think there's some builders that are potentially gonna buy this or some of the lots or all the lots, but to date, no one's asked me to do anything here. So I think these builders may have their own engineers, but my advice to all of these people would be, well, not to come back in front of the board for 150 feet on the other lots. There's no reason to do that, but I think that for the five lots, the best setup is for, you know, my in my view is rather than do something crazy is to just ask the board to be 107.5 feet on this one lot. Well, the question for, um, actually maybe for, for for us, is, is there a reason why, I mean, you mentioned 50 feet is what the Title V, is there a, a logic or background why the town requires 150? Uh, is there some environmental or reason for it? Rich, it's Melissa. I, and John, you might be able to touch upon it more. I know it's been in place well before I began with the health department, but I think it was to be more on the conservative side. It, it's certainly conservative. It's I don't know of any towns other than Walpole that are 150 feet. There are a few that are 100 feet, but even if you go to Rentham in Norfolk, um, where they have a ton of septic, well, they don't have sewers, so they have a, every house is a septic system. It's they go by Title Five, 50 feet. Um, I don't know where the 150 feet came from. And to tell you the truth, I think it was. Someone pulled a, a number out of the air. And... We do like the number. Um, think of all mm -hmm. the, the variances and things we've done and all the, the building we're trying to do in wetlands. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I like the idea of, of, of having a, a number much higher than, than what the state would have. Um, but I do I see... have a question, if, uh, real quick. Um, has the board ever denied a variance for the 150 foot that you're aware of? And if so, do we know why? I'm not aware of it. What I am aware of is that past boards have um, uh, allowed the variance as long as the septic is at least 100 feet from the, um, from the wetlands. So that's why I made sure it was 100 feet or more. I'm not, a, I'm not sure, I mean, on a repair, it's treated differently, right? Then we kind of go by Title V. So this is new construction, mm -hmm. but um, I can't name them off the top of my head, but I know that past boards of health in Walpole have approved septic system plans, leach fields that are 100 feet, that are between 100 and 150 feet from, from wetlands. 
I would tend to agree with the um, recommendation of keeping it at least a hundred feet because like John referenced, then at least it's mm -hmm. out of the hundred foot buffer zone, which I know the board mm -hmm. um, is not against con new construction within the hundred foot buffer zone. So I would agree with that, making it a requirement that at least it be a hundred feet from the, uh, from the wetlands. Yeah. I mean, you, you should just vote it the way I asked it. 107 and a half. Right. So when they build it, it better be 107 and a half or, you know, someone will be back in front of you <laughs> with their hat in their hand. And then the one more question too is this, the septic system that's going to be installed, um, does that provide, is there like, are there any limitations on that septic system? So say there's a builder that acquires this land and says that they want to build however big of a house and the septic system can't handle it and they have to install a, a larger septic system, you know, would, would it make sense to put a condition on there that they cannot be upgraded beyond this? Well, I guess that's sort of up to you. You can put any conditions you want. It's, it's your, you know, it's going to be your vote. The system that's in front of you is a four bedroom house. Um, your regulations require that it be 50% bigger. So we had a very, on these perk tests, we had very good perk tests. We had three minutes an inch, which is two minutes an inch is kind of the uh, fastest that we're allowed to design for. If you have less than that, it gets bumped up to two minutes an inch anyway. So three minutes an inch is on the way on the low, on the best side of the perk test scale, let's say. Um, they can go up to 60 minutes an inch. But so it's 50% bigger than it needs to be. It obviously uh, has to, by Title V, it has a reserve area so that when it does fail, there's an area to replace it. And um, as I said, I tend to design them as conservatively as possible. So I didn't push the envelope. We didn't try to make it a five bedroom or a six bedroom house. It's, it's a design for a four bedroom house. Um, and uh, I'm not really so sure that anyone will be running back here, you know, asking you for something else. I, I think it can be expanded to a five bedroom house. It just has to be, if you voted 107.5 feet away from the, from the wetlands, right? That's, that's what I'm asking you to vote. Um, Makes sense. And the board will, um, the board of health will still see the application for the septic system, I imagine. Oh yeah, you're just voting the variance. Rita and Melissa will hold my feet to the fire, believe me. Absolutely. <laughs> so make is there... sure that this thing meets the regulations. And you guys uh, should realize that you're very lucky to have both of them because yes. they're both really smart, a lot smarter than me. And they hold my feet to the fire more often than not, so. That is, that is outstanding, that's what we want. Yeah, you're you're lucky it. to have both of them, believe me. Mm -hmm. Certainly are. Town certainly does. On that, thank you, John. I appreciate it. And great discussion, everybody. Um, knowing that we've kind of got a lot of the background, some of the history, um, we will entertain a motion. Does anybody have one they want to present on me? I'll make a motion in regards to 399 Lincoln Road. Requests for variance for Walpole Board of Health. Regulations, the Board of Health um, elected grant variance um, that the septic system to be um, 107.5 feet instead of the town's requirements of 150 feet with um, the Board of Health recommending potential houses to be built, not to have larger than four bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Good. Any mm -hmm. second? I'll second that. Great. Motion has been made and second. Any other information or details we want to add? If not, we'll put it to a vote. And we will start off with, we start off last time. Uh, Mona. Aye. Stefan. Aye. And Carol. Aye. And I also. John, the motion has been passed. John, thank you so much for the, uh, the background and the explanation. Thank you. And thanks a lot, Rika, for helping me out with the screen share. Thank, thank you. you.
See you. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Great. All right. Uh, exciting world of septic variances. Huh? Mm -hmm. So 740, we're a little behind, but the next on the agenda is planning board, Paragon Investment Site Plan Approval, one, uh, 130 West Street and 25 Spring Street. Yes, so in, in the packet, you should have also seen some pictures of how um, they're planning um, to kind of have this, um, the setup of these units. So it's gonna be um, on the corner of West and Spring Street. Um, they're looking to put um, 24 two bedroom, bedroom condos um, and then commercial um, space on the ground floor. Um, and the idea behind this is that the people that um, own the condos will also have their business on the ground floor. Um, they're trying to kind of make it for um, people that want to work from home so they have their business kind of where their home is, make it easier for them. So that's the, the idea behind the project. Um, they will be connected to town sewer and water um, and they will have um, private trash pickup. So it won't be town trash pickup. Um, and I, they're gonna have a total of 66 parking spaces. So that's gonna be um, more than two um, per unit technically, but it's also gonna be some commercial space. Um, it's not within the wetlands. Um, so generally the, the board looks um, to ensure that there'll be proper lighting um, and sidewalks, um, kind of general public safety. So, so Rika, so if you own a business, you're required to own like a condo on top of that business? Like, like you, if they go together? Right. Like that right now, that's the plan. Right now. For it. Um, that's so they're problem. obligated to purchase a condo, even if they just um, they just want the commercial part. Well, they right. So right now, I think they're looking to connect those, the condo and then the commercial space. Um, I mean, that they might end up changing oh, that depending on, okay. but right now that that is what they're looking to do. Plus, I'm sure if someone bought it, they could always rent out their condominium upstairs. Right, right, right. Because yeah. who wants to live on top of their business? Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's not for us to be concerned that's about. That's not for us right? to be concerned about. That's not but, ours. No, I know. I'm just saying that, but they couldn't do that. So it, <laughs> you know what kind of commercial space this would be? Like auto right. body shops or like... What if there's like a lot of chemicals or something like yeah. that? It just seems. So, Stefan, yeah. I did, um, this is Melissa, I did speak with the owners originally when they were looking to just entertain this um, idea. And they did say they would probably be keeping it more um, like a business, like an office setting, no food oh, establishments, wow. nothing that would produce an odor, anything like that. Just more or less the concept of during COVID, a lot of people have been working from home and their homes might not be suitable to have like a drafting table or to meet with clients, say like a law firm, things along that nature. Cause that was one of my concerns as well. Like, is there going to cause odors? Are there proposing kitchens? Is there going to be a lot of accumulation of trash? Um, so their concept is more office style setting. Cool. That's okay. great. Interesting. Okay. That's different. That is definitely a COVID induced uh, change in business looks like, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta think differently. Okay. Any um, any other comments or concerns we we would have on this? We really don't have much other than uh, it looks like you've heard the waste piece yeah. and the lighting and so forth. So. Yeah. Yep, and that there's proper storage for trash, um, proper area, and that's large enough to accommodate both residential and businesses. The plan is very attractive. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone want to make uh, a motion on our position on this? Or any comments? I can attempt a motion on this one. Um, so regarding uh, site plan approval, uh, case 2104 for 130 West Street and 25 Spring Street, um, the board has uh, no issues or concerns with the current site plan approval. Um, and Melissa, do we want to make the standard recommendations, Enrique, um, for sidewalks and trash removal, or is that already included? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. I don't see it in there. 
No, I think we need to add it, right, Rico? Yeah, so yeah. like as a, stand, a standard comment of looking at um, lighting, sidewalks, um, yep. proper trash storage and removal. Perfect. How about bike racks? You could also <laughs> include that. Um, I think a lot of times that's been for apartment complexes and these look a little bit more like townhomes, but it's never a bad thing to have some outside. Or make the recommendation, sure. Okay. One quick comment too, um, since it's residential and that's a busy area, I don't know if the board makes these recommendations, but maybe crosswalks and stoplights in that area might be something to consider. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Good motion. Thanks, Stephanie. That's a good idea. I'm sorry, do we have a second? I'm sorry. I'll second that. Great. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion or comments? Then we will take a vote. Mona. Aye. Stefan. Aye. And Carol. Aye. Aye also for zero, zero. And next on is new business. Yes. What um, we were looking to um, implement a caterers permit fee. So as of right now, um, Walpole doesn't have any businesses that specifically cater. And we mean catering as in um, that you, you do events, you bring the food to events, you serve, sometimes even some of the prep and, and finished cooking is done on site. So it's not catering as in like, um, let's say Subway or Panera, right, where you can order takeout and they deliver it. Um, that, that's different. Um, and so the food code actually does not require, if you have a catering permit um, and you go to another community um, to have obviously an event and you're catering that event, you don't need to pull a permit with that um, other health department. You just need to notify that health department that you are having an event, um, you need to provide a menu, your certificates and your catering permit to show that you are licensed in another um, town. So as of right now, we don't have any specific caterers. However, as we've brought to the board before, we have um, Gatehouse Kitchens, which has those 12 individual kitchens. And some of the businesses that are operating out of there, at least one of them, he is a food truck as of right now. So the kitchen that he's renting um, from Gatehouse Kitchens on West Street, he's going to be using as his commissary, so as his base of operations for his food truck. But he's also looking to expand his business and also um, eventually have catering. Um, so that adds another complexity uh, with transporting the food, hot holding, um, ser proper service at the events. And so we also then need to have a permit that specifically says it's catering. So if he goes to another community in Massachusetts, he has a permit that states that. So he doesn't need to pull a permit with that other community for a catering event. Um, so we were originally looking to propose this as an add-on fee. We were looking at about $50, um, looking at um, what commu other communities in the area have. Um, but then we also realized as of right now, we don't have any specific caterers only that their primary or their sole concept is catering. So we're looking to also add a specific catering fee for a business that all they do is catering. Um, and so we were looking to do that at $200 to kind of match um, what the fees are for um, a regular food establishment in town. So, I hope so, that so makes sense. okay, I have a question. So yes. is that for caterers, like serving the food in the town of Walpole or making the food in the town of Walpole? Making the food in the town of Walpole. Because like if another caterer from another community comes to Walpole for an event, we just ask them to provide their permit from the community that their kitchen is based out of and for the menu and that they're properly certified, but we don't require them to pull a permit with us. So, but if we have a caterer that's based out of Walpole, we would need to permit them as a caterer so they could do the same thing going to other communities and not, not have to pull a permit. Right, but they don't have to, do they have to do that if they're um, using the kit, one of the 12 which, the kitchens that we already approved? Do they need the permit as well? If they're so, using? So oh, like if they're using the Walpole kitchen and then doing yeah. a catering event in Walpole? Yeah. Well, they would be permitted as a, as a caterer in Walpole, so they could do a, they could cater an event in Walpole because they already have a catering permit. Right. Okay. So that's, they don't need to get an, an, another permit. Okay. No, this is to, this is so that it's a specific permit for either if you're 
only a caterer, like that's your primary business, your sole business, you just are a caterer. So you don't have, you don't have seats, right? You just, your kitchen is your base of operations where all the dishes go to be cleaned, where you cook the majority of your foods um, and prep to, to then transport that food. So we're looking at a $200 fee for that when specifically only catering. And then the business wants to add on catering as a, an additional piece of their business. So if they're already a regular food establishment, but they also want to add catering or they're a food truck and then they want to um, also use their their base of operations kitchen for their food truck also as a base of operations for a catering um, company, then we would just, they would have an additional $50 fee. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Is that one time fee? So it's an annual fee. Just okay. all our, it would renew annually with um, okay. permit renewals. Okay, that's mm. sounds like an approach to me. Do we mm -hmm. uh, need to make a motion for that? Do we, or is that under new business, or do we need to make a motion? No. You would want to make a motion because we will publicize the um, permit fees in the newspaper. So just to say that you guys are um, implementing these new fees. I will make a motion regarding the implementation of food caters permit fees that we support the initiative and um, look forward to seeing how it works out. Do we have to specify the amount like it's going to be $200 per year or no need to? You, you definitely can add that in. Okay, and let's include the, the fee schedule too then. Nicely done. <laughs> Here, second. I'll, I'll second. Tie goes the runner. All right. So we've got motion to be made, seconded. We will take a vote. Mona? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Carol? Aye. And I also, thank you guys very much for that. That's very helpful. And there was um, nothing else on the agenda, but on the meeting packet email, there was information about the Norfolk uh, County 8. Maybe we could uh, bring that up. That seems like a, a great topic to end on. <laughs> if anybody wants to give us a little background and some uh, information on that would be wonderful. So um, like I did mention in my email, so as you're aware, we do have a great relationship, um, part of NC8. Um, we have been working with them for um, some years now on different kind of um, group effort. So we've worked on some food grants, some emergency preparedness grants. Um, we have kind of like similarities. It's comprised of Canton, Dedham, Milton, Needham, Norwood, ourselves being Walpole, Wellesley, and Westwood. Um, so we did apply for a, um, a shared services grant, um, which will help out with um, epidemiological surveillance. Um, we did actually find out recently that we can also use this for contact tracing. Um, so right now through the state, the contact tracing program has been extended until the fall, um, but if it were to come to an end, we would be able to employ someone to assist with contact tracing. Um, and again, this um, shared services is not to duplicate services that we have now, but to kind of enhance them. Um, there are certain things within our department that, you know, we're only a department of four individuals that we wish we could maybe delve a little deeper in, um, maybe even surveillance, just data studies, things along that nature, and potentially even share resources resources to streamline the process. Um, so that's kind of what this grant will be used for. So we're definitely excited. I feel like we have a great relationship with the other seven communities. Um, and we've definitely all helped each other out in one way or another. So I'm excited to kind of further this. So has have you received the grant money or just applying? So no, so we've, we've actually been awarded it. Oh, good. Oh, that's excellent. Someone came to meet the board. Oh, oh. oh. This is oh sweet. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Oh. <laughs> Has she started to walk yet? Uh, no. <laughs> Thank God, no. Is she ready to make a motion? <laughs> She's, <ready. laughs> She's getting trained for, for her next bottle. <laughs> her next one. Absolutely beautiful. Enjoy. 
<laughs> awesome. Well, that, that's great news and, and great, to see, <laughs> great to see little ones too. So um, anything else the board needs to talk about or? or so um, just two quick things, um, won't take too much time. So as you probably have already heard, there is a heat advisory um, for the 11th um, extended till the 13th, possibly Saturday. So I just want to make everyone aware. Thank you, Trish. Um, she's working closely with John Lightbody, who was uh, recently appointed the Director of Emergency Preparedness. Um, so working collaborative with him, and obviously if the need be that a cooling center need to be opened, um, that will be announced and communicated throughout the town. So just something to keep on your radar. And obviously for just those watching or listening to stay hydrated, try to stay indoors, keep an eye on your neighbors and those that potentially could be alone. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is um, you may have heard, so they have found um, West Nile virus um, positive mosquito samples, not in Walpole, it's in Attleboro, Medway, Sharon and Westwood. Um, again, this is not Triple E, this is West Nile virus. So just to make people aware, um, you know, remain indoors when, when needed, obviously use mosquito repellents um, with the EPA registered active ingredient, um, make sure you have screens, things along that nature, just to be vigilant. I know um, COVID-19 has really taken um, a front row seat to public health, but just being mindful of uh, obviously West Nile virus, Tripoli right now, uh, we are remote, thank goodness. So there has been no activity, but just to be vigilant is, is definitely important. And that's all that I have. So, so the ne when is the next meeting? Um, September. So our next meeting is September seventh. So, um, okay. right now, I think I did mention in my previous email, um, maybe two two times ago, we are allowed to meet remotely as of now until I believe next April. Um, I know the board did mention potentially meeting in person at some point soon. So not a decision that you have to make tonight, but just something to keep in mind. Um, we definitely can stay remote if the board would want to meet in person. That's an option. Another option since remote is allowed, um, as long as we have a quorum in person, those that are unable to attend in person can um, zoom in or call in and, and be remote. But we just need to have that quorum of individuals within the building that we meet in. Yes, yes, that would be helpful, especially mm -hmm. for the board members who are traveling, um, just like your case, Melissa, right now. Exactly. Yeah, I would agree. So we take advantage of it as long as we can because it. Yes. Um, and it does reduce our risk, so it's. Uh, it's mm -hmm. time, so. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the report from the road from our traveling reporter. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If there was nothing else. But I just thank Brenda for a great Facebook page on the farmer's market. Oh, thank you. You did a beautiful job. Somebody yes. even suggested that I wrote it myself, and I said, oh, I couldn't write that well. So well, thank you very much. I had a lot of help. Well, I you had did an a beautiful animal. job. I had Good. an animal. <laughs> thank you. Great. Thank, thank you for well. doing it. Appreciate that. All right, um, we will take, a, if there's nothing else, we will make a motion to adjourn. Mona? I'll make a motion. Oh, to adjourn. I made the motion. Would you like to, adjourn, you. like to vote? Aye. Make a motion to adjourn. And Stefan? Aye. And Carol? Aye. I also, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. And we will drive carefully those on the road. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye good night. Good night.